Today, we're gonna to talk about what I think is one of the most exciting updates to software in recent history, the ability to trigger a webhook from an action button. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we're a software implementation partner. If you haven't gotten started with software yet, you can do so using the affiliate link in the description below. So software's had these different action buttons, things that are navigational, you could open a details page and scroll, open a URL, also CRUD operations, like you could edit records, delete records, and now there's a one-click update where we can update values in the background, we can download files, and now we can trigger webhooks. The reason this is so exciting is because it now opens up the universe of possibilities that we can do with software. In the past, software paired with Airtable and you could rely on Airtable for a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to interacting with other applications and being able to use their automation functionality. But if you were using a different data source like Google Sheets, you wouldn't have quite as many options available to you in terms of how you're handling automations and integrations. So by using webhooks, we can interact directly with those applications that we want to take some data that we have from software and send that to some other application. Things like sending emails and notifications or creating invoices or updating records and integrating between other applications, this is now all possible. So in this use case, we're gonna take a look at a real estate portal and we have clients who are logged into this internal portal and we want them to be able to indicate that they have an interest in a given property. So in order to do this, let's click on trigger a webhook and we're gonna give this a label of schedule tour. So we've got a nice little button that we can click there. And now we need the actual webhook URL information. In this case, we're going to be using Zapier, but you could use Make or really any other software application that allows you to create your own webhooks. So inside of Zapier, I'm going to click on a trigger and we're going to choose this webhooks by Zapier. We'll click on our event and this is going to be a catch hook. We'll press continue. We don't need to worry about this next step, press continue again. And now we've got our URL that we can copy. Here's where we're gonna paste this URL into this webhook URL field. We're going to keep post as our method here. And now we're gonna turn on URL parameters. You don't have to do this step, but if you wanna send some information about the record that you're clicking on, and send that through to the other application, then you'll want to use these URL parameters. And this we do as these key value pairs. So in this case, maybe I wanna send the email of the client. So we'll put email. And then for the value, this is great because we can choose a number of different variables here. We can choose from our logged in user. So maybe we wanna have information about the person who is logged in the application. That's what we're gonna do in this case. So we'll choose logged in user and we wanna grab their email address here. Now let's add another value and we'll call this one property. And we're gonna give this a value instead of now the logged in user, we're going to use the selected record. Because we're in a list here, you can see we have multiple different properties listed. As they click the button for that individual listing, we want to send information about that property. We don't wanna send information about the entire list of properties. We don't wanna send it about other properties. We wanna make sure it's the one that we're actually clicking the button on. So here we can choose from our selected record. This is deals, I'm using HubSpot for this. And from here, this is actually the deal name is going to be the property itself. We've got this 101 Main Street and 5200 Sycamore Avenue. The other thing I wanna do here is to change my success message. Here we have a less technical message, something that's gonna be helpful to our user. So our agent's going to be in contact soon. At this point, I'm gonna publish my application. And now as a logged in user, let's go ahead and click on this property to schedule tour. We'll click that, we'll see our notification about our agent will be in contact soon. And now inside of Zapier, we have some test data so we can finish setting up our Zap. Let's go ahead and test our trigger. And now you can see that it found the record based on our button click. So here we've got this query string, both of the property and the email address, exactly what we wanted. That was the information we wanted to send from software. Now you'll notice that the property has these kind of funny characters, and this is because it's URL encoding the information. Because there's spaces in this, if you have different characters, it's going to automatically URL encode this, and we want to decode it. So to help us out with this, we're going to click on an action, and we're going to add the formatter by Zapier. For the event, we're going to choose text that we'll work with. We'll go ahead and click continue. For transform, here we can search for URL decode because we wanna take those funky characters and turn it back into normal text. For our input, we're gonna now take that query string of the property so that we can decode this. Press continue and let's test this step. You can see now that we have our 101 Main Street just as normal text. And then finally, let's add a notification to our agent. We'll search for Slack here. 
we'll go ahead and send the Slack notification. We'll have this event be send channel message, press continue. Here we'll pick our channel that we're going to use. And here's where we can plug in our data that we want to use in our message. Let's go ahead and press continue and we can test the step. And you can see that we now received a Slack notification about this client who's interested in touring the property that they clicked on. So obviously you're not limited here to Slack notifications or even to Zapier. There's many, many things that you can do with webhooks, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how powerful these webhooks can be to be able to interact with different applications from what you're building inside of Softer. Go ahead and get started with Softer today by clicking the link in the description below.